So this is my husband Parth, and hi, it's me, Delia. And this is us together 10 years ago in Spain. This is us on our wedding day. Well, actually, I just lied. This is actually our wedding day. And here we are at our vow renewal. But this is us now. We are 32, and we are thinking that we might have kids soon, maybe in like a year. But please, no advice or comments on that. Anyway, we are going to Spain because we're probably not going to be taking trips like this when we do have kids. So this is our now or never trip to Spain. Also, lots of good and bad happened on this trip. I'm going to share all that with you as well as all my tips along the way. So we flew into Madrid, our second time here, but our first time at this hostel. And no, that's not a hostel, but a boutique family-owned hotel, also known as a hostel. I digress. We really came back to Madrid for one thing only, the food. Namely, our favorite restaurant of 10 years ago, Taberna La Concha. A quaint little place with delicious tapas, and a hot little tip is to arrive super early if you plan to get a table. We also went to this food market, Mercado de San Miguel, and tried a variety of interesting and delicious food, like these mini clams, croquettes, and fish on toast. These are yours, these are mine, just kidding, we'll share. The only thing we would have passed on was the olives because we felt they were a bit overpriced at four euros a skewer. Okay, so we saw the cutest thing, candied grapes. I've only ever seen like candied apples before, but like candied grapes, very cool. We're gonna try. We'll go for While we were there, we also did a little shopping and I liked this store for funky decor. I tried to convince Parth to buy this outfit, but he refused. And then we left Madrid short and sweet. Our next stop, Granada. Now the road to get there is beautiful and mountainous, and with only one day to explore Granada, visiting the famous Alhambra is on our plan. But first, a new experience at the hotel, probably for all of us. You just wanted to say, Perth? <laughs> Bond. James Bond. We're in a car elevator right now. We have never been in a car elevator. Now we exit. A moment for this key card that is made out of bamboo. Job, eh? Yeah, I am a good job. I picked, picked the right it. one. Yes, picked I always it, pick the good places. Nice and they left us this. Ooh. Oh yeah, we have a cathedral view. It's pretty cool actually. Mm -hmm. Right after checking into our hotel, which we loved, we headed over to Alhambra. We are at Alhambra. We're gonna enter now. I have my fan because it's hot. It's hot. Hot. What, 40 degrees? I should have got the cap. Yes. <laughs> now the Alhambra is a palace and fortress complex and it's one of the most famous monuments of Islamic architecture and one of the best preserved palaces of the historic Islamic world. And that is why I was so interested in it. He was fanning me and said, he said, he said I'm a true fan of you. Yeah. We pre-purchased tickets to view the actual palace at 7 p.m., but arrived at around 4.30 to view the rest of the grounds. And honestly, that wasn't enough time. There's so much stunning architecture, culture, and history that we really didn't have enough time to soak it all in. And I know some people actually spend eight hours there. The views from General Life, which is the Garden of Paradise, has to be the most stunning views. It really felt magical. The views alone are just stunning, like definitely worth it. Like, let me show you. Something just fell on my arm <laughs> and I fell in the ditch. We also purchased audio guides so that we would understand a little bit more complex, but while they were better than nothing, they really weren't that much better than nothing. At 7 p.m., we got to go to see the Nasrid Palace, which was so beautiful and interesting to see. The detailed artwork, the endless archways, the Arabic and Quranic writing embedded into the walls. I've never seen anything quite like it. The rest of our time in Granada, we spent walking around to see the little shops. I tried all sorts of dried fruit, which by the way tasted all the same, and went into some unique shops too. I loved seeing the Arab influence, I think mostly because it surprised me to see this in Spain. 
Zara home, everyone. But unfortunately, it is closed because it's a Sunday here. We got an interesting dish of fries, eggs, and seafood, which was pretty good. And then we headed on to our next stop, which is by the beach in Nurha. Nurha is a special place. With only about 20,000 people who live there, it's a nice spot for people who really like a relaxing vacation vibe, aka people like me and Parth because we like things to go a bit slow. There's lots of little shops and restaurants there, and it is a tourist spot, so it's still quite lively at night. The beaches are second to none, and the food is really good too. In typical Spanish fashion, all the meals run a little bit later than we were used to, so dinner was about eight or nine, and that's standard. We come to Spain, what do we order? Thai food. Thai food. We stopped into a spot for Thai food because we were in the mood for something different, and we weren't alone. Later on that night, we also saw the most elaborate fireworks show, and they were so close by. Now people usually come to Nurha for the beaches and the beaches are so amazing. We checked out three beaches along the same coast and each one of them was a little bit different. Some had stones, some were more sandy, but by far our favorite was Playa Carabiello. The views from the top are breathtaking and for each beach you just walk down a set of stairs and you'll be greeted with breathtaking views of turquoise waters and mountain views. I will say that an umbrella is key though because in the summer months it can be like 35 degrees out and that's just too hot. Now for the food. Don't hate on us because as much as Spanish food is so delicious, we started getting a little bit tired of it. But our favorite restaurant from Nurha was probably Som Som, a Thai restaurant with a really cute terrace and yummy Thai food. We were also completely obsessed with Tateria Zeldin for all their awesome teas, sweets, and breakfast, so much so that we went there about five times. So we just had tea and apple pie, which is random at uh, this really, really cute cafe. And the tea was so unique though. One was a green tea, one was black tea, but they had such cool mix-ins. It's like orange peel. Orange peel, Bottom rose. Yeah. So I was unsure, but they were both so good. Yeah. So this is what we did. We're back again, except this time for breakfast. This looks so delicious. Chocolate croissant. So good. Mm. And with her tea. Mm -mm. <laughs> All seems to have been going well on our trip so far, but things don't stay that way. Big fines, sickness, and things that seem to bother me so much more on this trip to Spain are all coming up. But for now, off to Vijer. Vijer de la Frontera is a hilltop town that overlooks orchards and orange groves. It's also a place with so much charm. We just checked into this hotel that is probably one of the most beautiful decorated places ever. How they brought everything together is really, really nice from the corridors to the entrance to everything. So you enter and this is our room. It's like clearly been renovated and keeping like a lot of rustic charm over here. The view is just stunning. We're like really high up and it's just vast and beautiful. And then over there is the bathroom. The walls are all like lime washed, just stunning. Just all the details, all the colors, even the ceiling, just everything. Really, really nice. Now walking around here after siesta is a super enjoyable adventure. We love the shops of this town because they felt extremely artistically curated, like this shop that had beautiful handmade ceramics and art at a pretty affordable price. We love the store of this local artist who uses watercolor to paint one-of-a-kind designs on ceramics, framed art, and even shirts. And we also really enjoyed the free art exhibit at La Vera Cruz, but just be prepared to do a little bit of uphill walking. It is really steep. Can you tell? Whoa. The whole way is like on this incline. But what we weren't expecting was how stunning the sunsets would be from Vejer de la Frontera. Absolutely amazing to view before dinner. We found that this picturesque town is a great place to stay, especially if you want to dress up a bit for dinners after a long day of sightseeing. Seriously, compared to other places that we've been, if you're not a little bit dressed up for dinner, you will feel a bit out of place. When deciding to visit and stay in this pretty town, it checked a lot of boxes. 
One, it was a lot more affordable to stay here compared to other towns directly on the coast of Costa de la Luz. We are currently at breakfast at uh, such a cute little spot that's like really on a hill and they've like cut the table legs and stuff so that it like operates properly on the steep hill. Very cool. But we also picked this town because it's still close enough to the beaches, like this absolutely stunning beach, Cala de Roche, which was just 30 minutes away and offered a truly unique local experience of pastries being sold on the beach. What did you get? Some kind of a chocolate bun. Pastries on the beach. Runs out, that was the, there was only a few left. I'm probably just wanted to get another one. The guy just came to the beach and started ringing a bell. Yeah, with boxes we of pastries. I had no idea what it was. No. Until other people went over and we were like, what is that? Let's go over to you. Or whatever She's never it is. had pastries on a beach. Me neither. So. This beach is really fun, but the waves were a little bit crazy, a little bit violent. Really good. One tip when traveling around Spain is to buy your water and snacks at local grocery stores like Dia because you'll find good prices. How is he doing it? Where is this technology from? Why can't Canada have that technology? <laughs> Easily amused. But one of the other reasons to stay in Vejer de la Frontera is because of its proximity to the ferry terminal, which is going to take us all the way to Morocco, aka a one hour ferry ride away. Our ferry experience was that they can be delayed for hours with no notice at all. But without too much of a headache, we finally arrived. Our guide took us to a park where locals gathered to have family picnics and to see Cape Spartel, which is a beautiful lighthouse off the Tangier coast. And to our surprise, we got to climb to the top of the lighthouse, which was not for the faint of heart, though I did see some women carrying their babies up there without holding the railing, and I can't relate because I was so scared. Just a little scary, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And now we are on top of the lighthouse. We also stopped at the beach where we saw a different kind of beach scene. I had always wondered what beaches were like in Muslim countries, and it was kind of nice to see women not in bikinis because it made me imagine what it would be like to not have the body pressures to look bikini ready. <laughs> While we were at the beach, we also got to do something kind of unexpected, a camel ride. We're about to go on a camel ride, duh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I stepped on some of that the other day. It's very, uh, it's all planned. True. Now up until this point, I was nervous to ride a camel. Actually, I was nervous for about half of the camel ride, but my camel was adorable and the ride along the beach was so much fun. The camel owner really had a cute relationship with the camels and the camels did funny little disobedient things like splash in the water and stop to eat a snack. It was a clear highlight of the trip. Good camels, good camels. Aww. This is my camel, he was a good camel. Our camel ride took us up like this steep hill and my camel stopped to eat some vegetation despite the like owner's instruction. It was hungry. He just was going for it. That was really, really fun. A thrill. It was a thrill. I was terrified also. <laughs> we also got to taste some authentic Moroccan food like a tagine dish which, oh my goodness, was so delicious. This is tagine with dates and lamb, and this is couscous with chicken. Mm. But this was really the point where something on this trip really started to get to me. Across everywhere we visited, including all the cities in Spain and this city in Morocco, we noticed that the bathrooms are frankly quite dirty. Regardless of whether it's a nice fancy restaurant, very few had hand soap, so that's just something to be prepared for. Now after our fancy Moroccan meal, we were off to explore the shops in the Medina. Seeing traditional artisan sellers of Moroccan rugs, lights, and other handmade goods was definitely a sight to see. Here you can see tailors sewing details on dresses, rug makers working on their looms, and other artisans work in tiny shops performing traditional craft, which is not something that you see every day. I loved seeing the traditional colorful Moroccan decor, tile work, and architecture. And you know what else I love to see? Cats. So many cats walking on the streets, 
on outdoor tables. One even came to me when I went to it. And uh, we even saw some inside the ferry terminal. Definitely a cute sight to see. And with that, our one full day extravaganza in Morocco came to an end and we headed back to Spain. So we stopped at McDonald's, um, Spain McDonald's this time, we've stopped twice. I'd say maybe like a six out of 10, not like the best. Also got a McFlurry to go. This is how they do McFlurries here. We'll never understand why, but it's not mixed. <laughs> Just uh, not mixed, but that's okay. From here, our plan was actually to go to Lagos, Portugal from Spain, which we actually did go, but then we ran into an issue and our plans had to change. <laughs> Exhausted. So here is the current situation. We drove from Spain to Lagos, Portugal yesterday. We checked into our hotel and when we checked in, I found a few bugs like ants and stuff. And I just thought, okay, no worries. But then we went to the beach, we came back and at like 10 PM, I realized there were ants like everywhere, like in the wardrobe, in the bathroom. Like there just were so many ants. We asked the front desk if they would move us to another room. They said they had no other rooms. They were frankly quite rude. And it's the last like of our vacation. So we were like, you know what? We don't, we're not gonna stay here. So we decided to drive back to Spain. And now we're driving back to Nurha. I wish I could say that we ended our trip on a high note, but honestly, things went a bit south. I came down with the flu and felt super sick for days. And then... So I am by myself right now because parts. Went to the police station as uh, our car got towed. Our hotel told us a parking lot that we could park in. We parked in it and apparently it's like only daytime parking or some, I don't know, kind of an expensive mistake, but this stuff happens trying to just be positive about it and carry on. There's tons of trips where things go perfectly. This isn't, this isn't one of them. So while we're grateful to have been able to take this now or never trip to Spain, I'm honestly really happy to be going home. <laughs>